welcome back to WS Cube Tech. So guys, in our previous sessions, we covered topics related to the OOPs. We covered what are classes and objects. We covered inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation, getter and setter methods. So all these things we have covered so far. Today, we will be talking about the problem solving related to our OOP programming. So what I will be doing, I'll be showing you a question and then we will be solving that. So let's have a look on what question do we have over here. So here we have write a program in OOP to illustrate bank management system where a person can do the following task that is deposit money, withdraw money and view account balance. So with the help of this program a person should be able to deposit the money that means all the information is already there the person has gone there has given the account details now what he has to do he has three choices given over there that he wants to deposit the money or he wants to withdraw the money or he wants to view his account balance over there. So let's get started. Let's see how to create a program in OOP with the same. Before that, if you want to become a successful data analyst and if you want to learn from our experts live, then you can call on the given number or you can fill the form that is provided in our description. Not just that, with our every batch, you will be getting two demo classes for free. So here I'm creating a class called as bank account. Now inside this bank account, what all things, we will be having our constructor over here. Constructor will print us our uh, welcome message of the bank. So we will be writing over here that definition, initialize. So for initialize, we write INIT and self, we pass self parameter over here. Inside this, what all things we need to add, we need to write a welcome message. Plus we need a variable over here that will keep a track of the balance. So we'll be creating one variable called as self dot balance so balance will be the balance in your account that would be equal to zero next thing we will be having we will be having print statement uh, that welcome to the xyz bank so this is our bank now what all things we were asked for was first is to deposit the money so let's create a class called as deposit so let's create an object called as deposit so i'll be writing def deposit and i'll be passing the cell function over here that deposit money I want to deposit money for depositing money what we will be doing we will be asking for a variable over here that I will be calling it as deposit is equal to float so amount can be in float as well so float input enter the amount you want to deposit right once this thing is done what we need to do we need to increase this amount in the self dot balance so self dot balance plus is equal to deposit that whatever money is already there in that we will be adding this deposited amount after this what we need to do we need to write a print statement that i'll be writing amount and what amount has been deposited uh, the deposit amount right let's write it in the next line so i'll be putting a backslash and n over here that amount deposited next thing is over here uh, our question said that first is deposit money second is withdraw money so def withdraw money so, and we'll be passing the self parameter withdraw money that means how much money a person wants to withdraw now there can be two things over here that what if uh, what if there is only 500 rupees in your account and you are trying to withdraw 800 or a thousand rupees in that case your account should show it is it has insufficient balance so what we will be doing in this case first of all we'll be asking for the money they want to withdraw so withdraw is equals to float input enter the amount you wish to withdraw right after this what we will be doing we will be putting a conditional statement over here that if this withdraw money that if this withdraw is greater or le let's first write for smaller if it is if it is smaller for from self dot balance in that case what would happen in that case uh, the person would be able to withdraw the money and what we will be doing from this self dot balance we will be subtracting the minus is equals to what withdraw and we will be printing money withdrawn is here also let me write amount deposited is and money withdrawn is and we will be writing withdraw a variable let's also put it in the next line to so backslash and n right what if the withdraw is more than the balance in your bank account let's have a look on what we have to do that in that case we will not be doing anything we will simply be writing over here backslash and n and we'll be writing insufficient balance that means you have insufficient balance in your account and you cannot withdraw the money and the correct amount this is for our withdraw money right moving ahead next is about our view balance so we'll be creating a function called as view balance and passing the self parameter inside it 
Uh, inside this, I'll be printing the amount in your account is comma how much the balance. So self dot balance is the amount that is there in a person's account. Right. So these are the three things that a person would be able to do. Once this is done, what we will be doing, we will be creating the object over here. So for the object, I'll be writing a a is equals to the name of our class that is the bank account. Now, if I run this directly, uh, only the constructor would work as we have learned before that if I run this only directly. So, if I run this directly, nothing would happen because uh, what we have done, we have not printed the object over here. So, what we will be doing, we will be writing a dot. Let's talk about withdraw money or deposit money. So, if I run this only. Now, once we are done with this, what I will be doing, I will be creating an object. A is equals to the name of our uh, class that is bank account and open close the brackets over here. Let's run and see right now because right now we will be only getting the constructor that is welcome to the XYZ bank, right? Now, what we need, we need all three of them. But in what condition we need all three of them with our if conditions that if a person want to deposit money, withdraw money or view balance. So, for that, we can create a loop over here that while true. Inside this, I will be asking for the user's choice that choice is equal to int input press 1 to deposit. So, I will be putting a backslash n over here and writing press 1 to deposit. Another backslash and n press 2 to withdraw. Another backslash and n press 3 to view balance. And lastly, press 4 to exit. Okay. So these, thing, these things we have over here, now all we need to do is we need to put the conditional statements over here that if choice is equals to 1 in that case what a person would do. If choice is equals to 2 in that case what a person would do. So uh, we have to put conditional statements basically over here. So if choice is equals to 1 that means if the person is asking to withdraw money in that case we will be calling the object a dot withdraw. This is for withdrawing the money. L if choice is equals to 2 over here. Okay, first one is to deposit the money. So, I made a mistake over here. We will be writing deposit money. Second one would be withdraw. So, here I will be writing A dot withdraw money. Then again we have L if choice is equal to 3. That is to view the balance. So, for that we will be writing A dot view balance. And lastly, we have exit button. So, directly I am putting else break the loop. Now, let's have a look and see what happens when we run it. I didn't put a backslash over here. So, backslash and in. And I will run it once again. So, we have press 1 to deposit, press 2 to withdraw, press 3 to view balance, press 4 to exit. Let's deposit the money first. So, I am depositing 4000 over here. Uh, it says press 1 to deposit, withdraw and uh, view balance. So, let's go with 2 and let's try to withdraw 5000. Uh, even though we have right now only 4000 in our account balance. But still if I try to write 5000, it would say insufficient balance, enter correct amount. So, let's enter correct amount, let's write 3000. Now, let's do one thing, let's run the code and see what happens. So, I will be running the code. And here we have press 1 to deposit, 2 to withdraw, 3 to view balance and 4 to exit. Let's press 1 and add some money to the account. So, 4000. Uh, press 2 to withdraw. Let's try to withdraw amount which is insufficient. We know that in our account right now we only have 4000 rupees. So, let's try to withdraw 5000. Let's run the program and let's see what happens, what outcome comes over here. It says, welcome to the XYZ bank. Press 1 to deposit, press 2 to withdraw, press 3 to view balance and press 4 to exit. First of all, talking about press 1 to deposit. Before depositing, let's first view the balance. So, let's write 3 and the amount in your account is 0 rupees right now. Moving ahead, next is to deposit. Let's deposit some money. So, I'll be writing 1 and let's deposit 4000 inside it. Okay. After depositing 5, uh, 4000, what I'll be doing, I'll, I'll be pressing 2 over here to withdraw some money. Let's try to withdraw 5000. If I try to withdraw 5000, it says insufficient balance, enter correct amount. So, let's try to withdraw some money like this. I'll be writing the second one and here I'll be writing 3000 which is now sufficient. So, money withdrawn is 3000. So, previously we were having 4000, now it's 3000. Let's check if our balance says 1000 or not. If I run this, so it says the amount in your account is 1000 which is correct. Lastly, let's press 4 and exit it. So, as I press 4 and exit it, uh, this is how our break 
statement works and our loop stops over here. So I hope guys you guys have no doubts in the questions in this question. What we have basically done is we have created a bank account class. In this we have created a constructor which will call itself automatically. Next thing that we have done is to create a method to deposit the money. Another method to withdraw the money. Another method to view the balance. And we haven't called them all directly. What we have done using while loop and conditional statement. We have called them one by one by asking the user their choice. That if their choice is one. They'll deposit the money. If their choice is two, they'll withdraw three. Then they will view the balance. They will be able to view the balance. And lastly, if uh, their choice is four, then they will be able to exit the whole program over here. So I hope you guys have no doubts and no questions. In our next session, we'll be starting with a completely new topic. So stay connected, guys, and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.